right. We are live on Facebook. Hey, Hello. everybody. Hello. <laughs> Good evening. This is Charles. I'm the president of the United Arts Council and really delighted to see a lot of you here, uh, whether you're joining us on Zoom or whether you're on Facebook for our December first Friday. And uh, we are co-hosting this tonight with the Boylan Heights Art Walk. If you're joining us for the first time, United Arts has been hosting events like this in partnership with local arts organizations and artists since the pandemic started. In the past several years, in this month of December, we've hosted an in-person art market with the Art Walk in our offices on Glenwood Avenue. But we've moved out of that office and the Art Walk is virtual this year. So we decided to recreate the event as you'll experience tonight. Before I introduce our Master of Ceremonies, Simon Collins, you can see on the other side of your screen, uh, I wanted to briefly thank all the donors who gave to our Giving Tuesday campaign this year. In total, 61 people gave over $4,800. And Curie, one of our corporate partners, matched many of those gifts. We raised about $7,500 in total, which is a, a record for United Arts. And we're also really grateful to all the local businesses that offered prizes as a way to say thank you to our supporters. Last thing I wanna remind us all, in addition to the human cost of this crisis, which has tragically claimed many people, including artists and patrons of the arts, this has been a very difficult year for artists and arts organizations, not just in this country, but everywhere. From a report by the Brookings Institute, we lost 30%, over 30% of jobs in the creative sector in the Raleigh metro area and 7% of annual sales. And that was just in the period from April to July of 2020. So if you're here tonight, I'm sure you believe in the importance of the arts in our communities. That's why this year more than ever is a great time to support your local artists and organizations when you're purchasing gifts, making donations, etc. And, um, you know, uh, you know, whether it's you, whether this is something you do every year. You know, whether you, um, you know, you can tell us in the chat, whether you're on Zoom or on, on Facebook, you know, do you, do you per, I'd be interested, we'd be interested to know, do you purchase art most years, some years or rarely? Um, regardless, we would, you know, really highly encourage you to think about supporting local artists this year. We have an awesome lineup of four artists this evening. And um, what's going to happen is we've got 10 minutes with each of them. Um, we're going to take a look at their studios and, and Lyman's going to talk with them about their work. In the last two minutes of each of those uh, 10 minute segments, we're going to reserve for Q&A. So feel free to share any questions you might have, again, either in the comment section on Zoom or on Facebook. Um, and uh, Lisa McIntosh from United Arts is here and she's monitoring both. Thank you, Lisa. And then she'll share those questions with Lyman. And at the very end, we're going to come back with uh, Andrea Cantor, who's the chair of the United Arts Development Committee to do um, some prize drawings for, again, those really awesome prizes that have been donated for all our, our, um, our donors. So um, that's all I've got to share right now. So it's now my uh, distinct pleasure to uh, ask, uh, you know, to, to turn things over to Lyman Collins. Lyman. Well, hello, Charles. It's so nice to be with you again. Um, United Arts has been such a strong supporter of the arts in general, and you've always helped promote Art Walk. So we're really grateful and we're glad that we could continue this tradition virtually, since the Art Walk is virtual and First Friday is virtual and also sort of fits together, doesn't it? Um, how this came about, I do wanna take a minute and just explain, Art Walk has been going on. This would be the 28th year that we would have had the Art Walk, uh, you know, in the Boylan Heights neighborhood, which is just a terrific historic neighborhood on the edge of downtown Raleigh. Um, but of course, with things happening the way they were, we at one point thought we weren't gonna have an Art Walk, but really, I, I've got to give credit to the artist, the artist who pushed me to uh, continue with Art Walk. Skellig Gilmore in particular was a, was a real avid um, proponent of having a virtual Art Walk and he, he agreed to help with it. And so he's been a tremendous resource for us. I want to really give a shout out to him. And, and artists, you know, this is, as Charles said, this is a time that has been difficult for artists and it's diff difficult for us all. But I mean, the art sector in particular has taken such a hit and, uh, and, and many of these artists who have relied on art shows like this or like, uh, like um, you know, Art Explosure or Lazy Days or the various art events that takes place throughout the year that makes our lives so rich, uh, not to have that was, was really a void. And so for us to be able to do this virtually, I sent a message out to artists and asked who would be interested and was just really overwhelmed by the amount of artists. We have 60, over 60 artists on the, uh, in the virtual art walk this year. And so I hope you will, Check that out at www.boylanheightsartwalk.com. And uh, that way you can see all of the artists. We have four very special artists with us tonight. And I'm just delighted to be able to, to uh, welcome them and to introduce you to them and their work. So our first artist 
is Manjari Lal, and she's going to join us in just a minute. She is a uh, she she does incredible work with her um, with scarves and uh, really beautiful abstract abstract art in this beautiful format. So is uh, if if Manjari is can join us, that would be really uh, really wonderful. Marjorie, I think you may need to unmute yourself. Okay. Hello. Hi, can you see me? No. Okay. Um, Technology is wonderful until it's not. All right, I got it. I'm sorry. Okay, hi. Hey, hi. I'm wonderful so happy to have you. To be here. Yes, thank you. Um, so we're, we're really, really pleased to, to have you with us, Madri. And if you would talk a little bit, tell us a little bit, a little bit about your art, how you got drawn to this particular art form, and and uh, what it means for you to be an artist in today's uh, climate. Um, so I am from India. I'm a textile designer from India. Before coming here, I was working with weavers and craftsmen in India, creating fabrics, designing saris. And then I came here in 2006 and my heart is a heart of an artist. And I still, I had to get involved with the community. So I took up a studio on Glenwood Avenue and had my first work, first Friday on um, in December, 2013. And I think between that first Friday and this first Friday, this virtual first Friday is going to be the most memorable one for me because uh, it's bringing out so many emotions from all of us. We have never experienced creating art in times like this. We never thought, but, but you know, when I create art in a time like this, it holds me together. So I really appreciate this opportunity to show what I have because what I have is what is in my soul. And this is how I, I deal with things around that this is my life here. So I am so honored to share my life with you because my life is full of colors. My life is full of emotions. And those emotions are what you see in my scars because each scar here has a story to tell. It's, it's a part of my life. So when I came here, I wanted to tell my story and doing a runway show was the best way for me to tell my story. Redress so while tell, us, tell us what a runway show is. Oh, okay. Those of us who may not know what a runway show is, give us a, a little background on that. So in, I, I came across Redress Raleigh and they were great in promoting upcoming designers, giving them a chance to have a show where you would have six, seven models or eight, nine models. And um, you could walk on the runway, you could you would you choreograph your whole show, you would put it to music. And so it was a whole show that you had to produce with the fabric, the art. You could be a dress designer or you could be a hand painter like me. And I, I created um, scarves for all my designers wraps. Um, there are some pictures behind and a lot of the things that you see are the, the scarves and wraps that were used by, by my models. I never took them out because they were so special to me. I never wanted to sell them, but I feel like this is the first time I'm like, okay, I'm open to showing all my work and letting it go. So what you see here is what I produced over the years. Um, and this was worn by the models on the runway. And two of my most special models always were my kids. So in my first runway show, my older one was six and my younger one four. And then the second runway show, um, which was called Movement from Yoga to Ballet, since I am from India. So I am close to yoga, I understand yoga. And my kids were doing ballet in that time. They were six, they were eight and six. And my eight year old wanted to do a show where she was a ballerina. I said, okay, great, I can do that. So. I made yoga movement from yoga to ballet where I contacted the yoga studios and they they did the yoga on the on the ramp and that was followed by the ballerinas uh, who danced followed by my kids who danced the runway. It 
was a beautiful moment. So I have a lot of pieces from those shows that I am going to be showing in my art walk this time. Um, I would also like to sh share with you some pictures so you can see what my work looks like really because it's a three-dimensional work. It's hard to imagine what it can be without actually seeing it on a model. So that's my tagline, let art drape your soul because um, it, it really drapes your soul. When you wear this, I feel like I'm draped with art. So let me start this little slideshow that I have for you. So this was the first, in the first show, I had all these scarves with fur. This was a cape with the skylines at the bottom, all from India to New York. I made roses on veils. I was becoming more American day by day. This was the second runway show where my kids were a part of the whole thing and they just loved it. And it was really special. Um, the Ganesha has been close to me because whenever you start something new, you pray to God Ganesha. Um, these are the orchids worn by the ballerinas, the orchid scars. I still have these scars and I'm gonna be displaying them. My kids, at the end of the show, taking a bow, it was a special moment. Now this is another really very special thing for me. This is a Glenwood um, shock board, poetry wall. Um, this was another show where Donna Belt, she was my main model and all my friends over here, we portrayed the poetry board on the runway. If you see what she's wearing, I, I have that on sale. I'm willing to let it go now. This is a cape with um, quotes from Rumi written all over the cape because Donna loves Rumi. So I said, okay, this was a personal, I made personal scars for all my friends. So they would have a personal connection to all the creations. This has been my best show ever. And I'm gonna, so these are all the things I have created over the years. I think I'm just repeating them. I'm sorry, I'm not good with technology. Mandri, I think you're, I, I, I really love the uh, way you summarized, drape yourself with art. I think that's a wonderful um, uh, way of thinking about, and especially your particular art form, which is so beautiful. It seems delicate, but I ex expect it is not as delicate as it looks, but it is so beautiful and, uh, and so evocative of so many cultures. I mean, you certainly get a sense of, I think of, of, your, your, of your roots in India, but you also see it as, as, as it's been translated into American as well. So I, I really want to, uh, want to congratulate you on making such, such art that, that encompasses all of that. And again, that, that slogan, your tag, I think is, is fabulous. Thank you because so much. Right. Art does connect us. I mean, what you said earlier was we, we need these connections even more so in this time of where we are now. And, and, and having art to connect us is so important and you're helping to connect us. So I thank you for that. Thank you. And I would like to invite anyone who wants to do a virtual tour of my studio on Sunday. I would love to show them around through a FaceTime call and show them because you really have to drape something to realize if you like it or not and I'm willing to do it. So thank you for giving me the chance. And, and um, Mandra, we've gotten a question from, from uh, someone in, the, in our audience who says, do you share the story of your scarf with the new owner? Yes, so I still have in my diary uh, written, the first scarf I ever sold in Carter Building, that's where my studio was, uh, was a, it was a mermaid scarf. And so I still have it written 2013. Thank you for the beautiful scarf. Your story reminds me of my mom who used to tell me mermaid stories. So you made this scarf special to me and I'm touched. And I love the way you told your story. I tell, I give my scarf with a story because that's how you make a connection. It's not a just a scarf. It's a special moment when you wear it. So yes, I do. Thank you. 
And thank you for creating those special moments, Manjri. I think your, your, um, your work is really, really beautiful. And uh, we're sharing with the, uh, with the group your, uh, your website so that people can go and look even further. And also, again, you are available on the, uh, on the Art Walk website, www.boylandheightsartwalk.com. And, uh, and, and I know that you've got a special coming up. Uh, you're, you're going to be doing some things that are, are uh, special for, for people coming to visit you. So thank you so much. It has been really wonderful having you be a part of this and, and being a part of Art Walk and, and in person and virtually. So thank you so much. We really thank appreciate you. Thank you, you. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. Our next artist is, uh, I think you, you'll be surprised. You're gonna see how Art Walk encompasses so many different art forms. So I'm not gonna say anything more, just introduce Mark Bickett. Mark, if you will unmute yourself and uh, so we can see you. And Mark Bickett is with Bedford Avenue Flutes and I'm just gonna turn it over to him right away. Take it away, Mark. Uh, thank you, Lyman. Uh, I don't see myself showing up yet, but I guess Charles is working on it. You may have to do something on your so, Yeah, Mark, you've got to turn your video on. I, I can't, um, I can't turn it on. We can't, oh, I can ask you to start your video. There you go. <laughs> huh. Oh, here we go. Down at the bottom. Now we see you. There you go. All right. <clears throat> All right, as Charles said, I'm Mark Bickett. Um, what I thought we would actually do is, uh, so this is Bedford Avenue flutes. So I think you'll understand a little better when I start talking about the flutes. So we decided to lead in with the song. Uh, I'm recruiting my wife, Katrine. Hello. Uh, we're gonna play you a short duet just to let you hear <clears throat> what these flutes are a little bit like. And then uh, uh, Lyman can kind of come in and start asking us his questions. Uh, this is one you'll recognize. It's a uh, side we play a Christmas carol, seemed appropriate. It's in the bleak midwinter. That's just an example of you know what these little magical instruments can do. Um, Lyman, you have any questions? Or you want me just to start talking about these flutes a little bit? Mark, I want to pay tribute to your work, and and you've been a part of Art Walk for a while now. And you know, Art Walk is seen so much as a visual art form or artist showcase. And uh, not to take away anything from the visual beauty of the flutes, but it also, Art Walk also gives an opportunity to hear your beautiful music as you, we just heard. And I, and I can't help but reflect on the years that you've been in Art Walk when it's been live and walking down the street and hearing that flute music is just, uh, it's just beautiful. So thank you for that. Tell us a little bit about how you got involved in flutes. Uh, well, it was kind of a random event to maybe about 12 or 15 years ago. Uh, my wife, Katrine, which you just heard, she's actually a professional musician. Um, and we were at a, uh, a festival out at the fairgrounds. I think it was Carolina Designer Craftsman or something. We were members that year. And we'd gone in and they'd given us like a $20 gift certificate or something for that show. Uh, at the time, I was kind of retiring. I was trying to actually be a jeweler. 
I'd had my GIA accreditation and I was taking courses for metal work and things like that. But we went in this show and we didn't really see anything immediately that we bought. And we were actually out in the parking lot leaving. And Katrine said, uh, I haven't used my $20 gift certificate. Um, so we said, okay, let's go do it. We walked back in. Uh, there was a flute maker there, uh, David O'Neill, which I, we, we bought Katrine, my wife, bought the least expensive, tiniest little B fat, B flat flute, you know, about this long, really shrill little instrument. Uh, it was high, very high pitched. Um, we brought that home and all of a sudden, within a few days, she was taking lessons and then it exploded really. By the end of the year, we had flutes on every surface of the house. Uh, we had become very, very close friends with David O'Neill, uh, who became my apprentice with him. He became my mentor, was very generous with his sharing his knowledge and the pitfalls he'd encountered in the process. Um, so it made it uh, very possible for me to hit the ground running once I had my, sh I had my shop set up. So it was very, very nice and it's been very rewarding. And, you know, we've been able to, like you say, it's a functional instrument. So there's some things you can't change, but it's also a canvas. So you can use it in an artistic way by decorating the outside different woods, and things like that. And they really are beautiful. Um, we've gotten a question, uh, Mark, uh, can you tell us the difference between a flute and a recorder? Uh, many people play recorders in school, you know, I mean, when, when right. I was in school. But uh, so tell us the difference between a flute and a recorder, or is there a difference? Uh, there is definitely a difference. Uh, so this is a, called a Native American style flute. Uh, it's based on you know, the, the Native Americans that lived in the plains. They used it kind of as a courting ritual, not really ceremonially. Um, uh, but the function, uh, you know, it, it, it's, if you can look at the flute, it's a two chamber flute. You just blow in the end and it kind of, you know, it, it comes through. It's very simple to play. Anyone can play this. Um, but um, Let's see, I lost my train of thought. The um, recorders, tell us about recorders. recorders. Yeah, recorder has actually a larger range and it has a different tuning. So recorders, they have a bunch of extra holes on the bottom and in the back, uh, a few things like this. This plays an octave and maybe two to four notes at most above that octave. Um, the advantage of it a bit is it's a little simpler to play, but they're tuned in a kind of a, a Western scale. Uh, they started doing it in the 90s. Uh, the basic tuning is a pentatonic minor. Uh, so it's pretty easy to play and the minor scale gives it that nice meditative sound that you actually hear. Minor scale is, you know, just very straightforward. Mark, why don't you show off some of your flutes? Let us see some of the variety that you have because they are such beautiful uh, instruments, as you said. And, and I believe you have a stand that you can uh, actually display them on. And so show us some of that and talk a little bit about the different types of wood and does the wood affect the sound? Uh, yes, you can kind of see behind me, there's a lot of flutes there. Um, so I have quite a few and I've used lots of different woods. Uh, they're embellished differently. I use multiple woods in some flutes. And, and just inlays and others. Uh, the simplest basic flute, this is a cedar flute, uh, no extra woods. They're all six hole flutes, uh, even though they're pentatonic, some of them are only five holes. So some flutes you only make, not mine, but some you can make this. The extra hole allows you to play major scales. Uh, so I include it. Uh, you can do many, many things with this flute. Uh, so there's, there's that. The next level would be inlays. This is just an example uh, of a walnut with mother of pearl inlays. Mm. Uh, the little piece on top, it actually moves around. That kind of directs the airflow. So artistically, you can do a lot with this piece because it doesn't, on top part, it doesn't really do anything. You can, you can make it into different shapes or whatever you like. In terms of the body of the flute, you can inlay, you know, do whatever you like to do with it. Uh, this is another inlay. This is an E. It's on a light background. This is malachite inlays. Uh, mm -hmm. This is one of Katrine's flutes that she plays all the time. And it's very beautiful. This Alaskan yellow cedar. It's a very nice sound wood, very soft and, and very sweet. 
the hardwoods tend to be crisper in general. The flutes tend to be heavier. Uh, That's really interesting, Mark, saying that you also you also put uh, things that aren't necessarily wood. The inlays, you know, that, that malachite and the mother of pearl inlays are, uh, you know, gives it a distinction that I would not expect. And, does, and, and I'm guessing that that doesn't necessarily um, necessarily affect any of the sound. Not at all. I mean, it's just really using the surface as a canvas, like I say. It, uh, you, can, you can do whatever you want on the outside of that flute. Uh, there are you know, physical things you have to keep in mind in terms of the shape of the flute and, and things like that. But you can modify quite a bit. You can do anything on the outside uh, and it doesn't really affect it. And you can also add multiple woods. So you can see this one, it's, it's got a Alaskan Sitka spruce, kind of bear claws, has this like a pattern in it, which you probably can't see there. This middle band is African blackwood and the center is a very highly figured walnut. And you can see the bird kind of blends into the top. So you, you, there's a lot of things you can do artistically with these flutes beyond the sound. But the sound to me is, is critical. We want people to play these. Uh, we don't want them to end up in people's closet. Uh, and you can, you can display them. And they're, you know, make, I make stands for these that people also purchase with a, you know, the, some of the other flutes. So, you know, you have a stand, something like this, where, you know, if you want to display the few, you, you can sit on there kind of like this. Mark, do you also teach? Uh, my wife teaches. So if, if someone wants to uh, acquire a flute and acquire the, the, the ability to play it, uh, you can direct them in the right ways for that as well. Uh, yes, and that's, that's really a big part of our business because uh, most people that take lessons are more serious about it. They really want to learn. Uh, and then they'll want different keys because uh, each flute, the, 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 Katrina was playing, well, I was playing an F sharp and a C sharp. Uh, so the lower the flute, the larger the flute, uh, it gets mellower and you go very high, you get you know like an A and I actually make Bs, which is like the first one Katrine ball, which is a very high pitched flute. Most people use those to play in duets where they're balanced out with a more moderate sounding flute. Um, it's very easy to learn. I mean, people, I mean, the, the first thing people ask me when they walk in the booth or what they say to me 90% of the time is, I have absolutely no talent for music. <laughs> and that's just not, it's just not true. It's never really true. And we can show people in 15 minutes where they can get the scales. They can even play a little song. Uh, so, and usually they're quite thrilled about that. And some of those people want to do more. Some just want to sit in their living room and, and kind of mellow out with the flute. Uh, well, that's perfectly fine. And a musician, it has actually quite a huge range when you get in to an actual musician, you get into different scales. And um, so it, there's two sides of the coin. It's very simple. You don't really need any talent. You don't need to read music. You can download tab online, which shows you exactly where to put your fingers. Great. Uh, Thank you so much, Mark. I mean, this has really been uh, been wonderful. And, and, and again, another way of us expanding uh, the reach of Artwalk. Uh, Mark's uh, in Bedford Avenue Flutes uh, website web link is in the chat so you can visit there and also uh, make sure to uh, to, to check out the Boylan Heights Art Walk www.boylanheightsartwalk.com Mark is going to be hosting on Sunday is going to be hosting a, a, a sort of a live concert and there's details about that in the special offer section on the website so yeah, at 2 p.m uh, we're gonna yeah we're gonna have a live zoom an interactive zoom so face to face like you were standing on the porch 2 p.m. And if you go to the website, it'll tell you how to, to register for that. Great. Thank you so much, Mark. Okay. It's, been, it's been really delightful. All righty. Thank you. And now we're, we're, we're ready to welcome our next artist, Sinjin Lee. And I hope I didn't massacre your name too badly. <laughs> but thank you so much for being with us. And uh, and tell us a little bit about your art. One, one of the interesting things I think about Sinjin is that she she uh, operates in a couple of different mediums between both, both jewelry and furniture, actually, and clocks, which I have a real partiality to. So, uh, Sinjin, tell us a little bit about your work. So, hi, I, good night, everybody. Um, so, I am actually an industrial designer by, uh, by that's my degree. Um, but I also came to the States. I'm original from Venezuela. I came here and then 
1992, and I did a, an internship, um, an apprenticeship with a, a local jewelry designer, Marianne Shear. Um, some of you in the art um, might know uh, of her. And so I started uh, studying metalsmith, and that's another of my, um, my degrees. But I also, as a designer, has a passion for all kinds of materials. And, and in my jewelry, I use, you know, all kinds of metals and also uh, acrylics and wood. So I like to change, you know, styles. Um, but of course, one of the, my favorite things are, you know, working with, you know, metal silver and uh, gold, gold fuel. And uh, one of the things that I started for years ago I wanted to make an homage to my dad. My dad was a civil engineer, but he also had a passion for woodworking. So I wanted to do something that relate my design, my love for color and wood. So I started, I started the jewelry that, you know, has wood in it. It's partially made out of wood and metal, but I also started to make clocks and full of color and all the, the RLB collection, which is the, the digits, the, the sorry, the, um, my dad's uh, initials um, are all red in the back. And this is unimagined his favorite color. Um, most of the clocks are very unique. Even if they have the same colors, they probably their circles is a little smaller. So I tried to make it, a, um, one of a kind as much as I can. Um, this kind of cloths, um, they have also a veneer and it's, it's uh, also painted. And they are, um, the, the mechanism that, you know, works uh, with a um, battery. I also have um, the tables and let me move the computer. Hopefully I will not get, make you dizzy. Um, but these are my, my side tables and the good thing about it is that you can actually take it take them apart what puts them together is a a um, um this is a pipe and you can screw them and you know uh, move them move them uh, uh, away or put them put them away so let me show you a little bit of my my work um so here you have the acrylic line, which is, um, I call it archetypo. Um, you will see the, the MRL collection, which is also dedicated to my mom. And it's silver in, it is Japanese beads. Um, I also have some of my silver um, collection. And as you can tell, I am very, I like minimalism and also like simplicity, a lot of color. Um, and I think the more simple um, you have things, I think um, makes them more elegant. Um, but tell us where you find your inspiration. I, I, I appreciate the simplicity, but you, you are inspired by something. Um, actually, uh, you know, it's, I like modernism. So I think uh, I, I actually can tell you, it just pops in my head. <laughs> Spontaneity, that's great. Uh, and, uh, your minimalist approach really pairs that idea down into its, into its essence, is what I'm seeing. And I think the other thing that actually helps me to get inspired is that I get bored with the same design. So I want to try to make it better. I, I found that um, when I started making this, um, this collection, the wood collection, I have a different mechanism uh, or a different um, uh, uh, parts, uh, what's it called, like uh, hooks, and then I redesigned the whole, the whole, the whole earring it's to make it better. So I think it's also that I get, I, I want to redesign or change the design, and so that's also part of the inspiration, I feel. So, and this is also part of that RLV collection uh, with the circles. There's another reason why I use circles so much, as you can tell, is um, I think the simplicity of that shape and makes it, makes everything so clean and, and soft. So for me, circles are, um, I don't know why, but I love them, so. Well, I think it's also a symbol, it symbolizes for me, 
uh, coming together. I mean, uh, you know, circle when you circle up and you circle together, it's a it's a it's a feeling of unity, a feeling of uh, of togetherness, and uh, and so it's, I, I agree, it's a very warm and very uh, engaging shape. Yes, and um, and very easy to work with. I think because it's such a you know simple sh shape, um, it's easy to add color and not clash. I mean, I think it, it works with everything and, and that's a reason why I, I am fascinated by it. Um, I also have ornaments um, for, you know, holiday. This year has been such a crazy year that I think a lot of people are starting to decorate or already decorated. And, um, you know, I make the hearts. It's another of my favorite shapes. It might seem kind of corny, but um, in uh, the good thing about them is that they have, they're different in each side. A lot of people like to give them for, you know, some little uh, details. And um, and for this um, our walk, I have a coupon that you can use in any order that you can that you make. It's a uh, uh, BH Market, and you can do that on the website. I also, you're, you're looking right now on my porch market, which I only do by appointment. Uh, if you're interested, you can um, go to my website and just send me an email and we can, we can do what a, by an, set an appointment for you to come and see. Uh, but the best thing has happened this year is people have done everything virtual. Um, this things work wonderfully because people can, you know, see and you know, Zoom has been such a help um, for people to shop. So if you need to do a Zoom call and just, I can show you better, uh, more detail what you, what I have. And, you know, I can mail it to you. All, all jewelry is mail free, it's free shipping. And um, the tables and clocks, um, I, if you're local, I can deliver them to you. Or otherwise it has a, it, there is a shipping, um, amount in the on the website, and I can send all the, the I can send the jewelry you know um, nationwide. So, well, this has been wonderful. It's it's really um, exciting to see the variety of the work that you're doing. Um, you 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 know you, you the I think it's interesting to see the combination of your work with jewelry and your work with um, and your and your work with things like tables and clocks and and uh, and using that shape in such an innovative way. So I salute you for your work. Um, we're getting lots of nice comments from people. Um, and again, you can you can certainly uh, see more of Sinja's work um, on the on the Boylan Heights website, www.boylanheightsartwalk.com. That will uh, that will get you there. Also, her direct uh, Sinja's direct link has been put in the chat, so you can check check out there and uh, and uh, just continue to uh, enjoy her work and all the work of the artists that we're talking with. I really appreciate your, your um, continued um, collaboration with Artwalk. You've been, uh, you've, been a, you've, you've been at both the live event and the virtual event, and you're just one of our stalwarts. So thank you very much, Sinja. I appreciate having you a part of this. Thank you very much. And now we, we're going to round out our, our artists uh, in this particular uh, iteration, with uh, Caitlin Carey. Caitlin Carey is a it, it works with fabric and uh, creates incredible scenes of landmarks and locations. And uh, so, uh, welcome, Caitlin. Uh, we'd love to hear a little bit more about uh, about your work and how you got involved. And tell us a little bit about it. Oh, hi and hello, everybody. I loved what Manjiri said about. Um, about art holding us together in this time. I feel very much the same. I'm just lucky to, um, to be able to make work. And, and also I have this sensation that, um, that people really are hungry for art right now. Um, and I, I am, <laughs> and it's, it's hard to be apart, but i um, so grateful for all the ways in which um, as the year has progressed, we've found ways to, to share what we're doing, and um, so that's uh, that's where I'm at. I'm also in my 
home studio, which is a big change for me. Um, I, I had a studio at ArtSpace for many years and first Fridays would be, you know, bustling, crowded, affairs. I miss that a lot. Uh, and I do welcome visitors in my studio. I thought I'd try to show you around a little bit. My walls are, are actually a tiny bit, bit, well, not a tiny bit, kind of a lot bare. So I'll share the screen and show you some newer work that's actually away at a show right now. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, this is my room. I, I make um, uh, textile uh, tap tapestries, hangings um, uh, out of repurposed upholstery fabric. Um, you can see over my shoulder the um, that I've depicted the Science Museum here in Raleigh with the globe out front. And this piece is actually really big. You can't tell it's five feet wide. Um, and uh, here's the uh, I, I tend to depict uh, things that are near my house. This one's right down the street. Maybe you recognize the Bain water treatment plant. Um, and so I, yeah, I feel like that's just nauseating. <laughs> it's also, like, Kayla, and Kayla, when I see something like the Bain, I, I feel like that in, in, a, in a way you also are, uh, oh, the Bain's not gone, but I mean, it's kind of going. And, uh, you memorialize, you help us appreciate some of the landmarks that we have and uh, showcase them in a, in a really unique way. I mean, I, I, I appreciate the vein for its, uh, its sort of art deco look and the way you have uh, kept captured it there in that particular work is, is wonderful. And, and I think you do that with a lot of your work. Well, thanks. Yeah, I think the big impetus for me, I've been making this kind of work since about 2014 or so. and really as I launched into making this kind of work, the, the thing I was really thinking about is what makes a place a place and what makes us love it. And Raleigh is, um, you know, we're a small city. We, we, um, we may not have the distinguishing characteristics of a river town or a coast town or whatever, but we, we have all these fantastic places that um, are full of stories and full of good food and full of memories for people. And I just set about um, collecting those. Uh, and so um, as far as talking about what I have to sell or what, what, what you would see if you came to my tent at Art Space, I, um, I have made a lot of prints from some of my iconic Raleigh landmarks. Um, that people really seem to enjoy. And this year, uh, well, many years I've made a calendar and sadly I, I wasn't willing to take the risk of uh, creating a product that had an expiration date this year. So instead I made some note cards um, that uh, feature several, um, eight in fact, of my sort of most popular Raleigh designs. Um, and those are available of course on my website and I'd love to, um, get those out around town. I thought maybe I'd sh try sharing my screen. You'll have to forgive me. I'm not super facile at that, but let's see if I can do it. Uh, maybe. Is that happening? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So this is um, from my little store and my website. These are um, examples of some Raleigh landmarks that I have made prints from the skyline, the Reynolds Coliseum, our dear Krispy Kreme. Um, and I also have uh, forayed into portraying uh, people, mainly musicians seems to be my um, obsession. There's Doc Watson and um, I've done a few others including Dolly Parton and uh, Elizabeth Cotton. Um, but then real quick, I thought maybe I'd land on new work. This is um, all created for several solo shows uh, now happen. And now they're in Yadkinville, and, um, but they will be, um, oh, my screen won't move. Okay. Hmm. It's weird. I can't scroll up and down. Oh, well, darn. Anyway, some new, um, somewhat more abstract conceptual work. 
Um, and I have shows upcoming uh, at the Cary Arts Center and Sertoma in 2021. So um, a large body of, of work that I'm pleased about um, getting out, God willing, if things are open. And if not, we'll just see them all on the computer. <laughs> Caitlin, do you do commissions? I certainly do. Yeah, that's a big part of my bread and butter. I, I've, I depict... Um, you know, the family home, the family business. I, I, a favorite one that I did recently was for a couple on their anniversary. I uh, did a needle print of Moe's Diner, which is where they got engaged. And it, it was actually, the presentation was actually during the pandemic. And I set up my carport with a fancy table and tablecloth and they brought dinner and I presented the artwork with a, you know, an unveiling in my carport. So that was, that's a way I uh, <laughs> recently conquered the pandemic. <laughs> Very clever. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so where do you get your fabric? You said you is repurpose upholstery fabric. Do you, uh, is it, are these things that have been, uh, you know, the fabric's been taken off existing pieces or is it uh, scraps from upholsters who are doing work? Where do you get your fabric? Uh, I haven't ever used anything I don't think that's already been on a piece of furniture. I might find some wear and tear there, but um, there's a lot of sample uh, books that go out of date and those become, um, they would otherwise wind up in the landfill. Um, and I first found those at Scrap Exchange, but as I've gotten a little bit more established, um, some wonderful designers, interior designers and uh, upholstery folk have um, found me and they're so thrilled to see the fabric get used because like me, they love the fabric and want to see it um, used. So, and some remnants. Every once in a while, I have a little problem that I have to solve in a building and I'll have to take a trip to the thrift store and find something that, that doesn't exist in my collection. But um, for the most part, I'm, I'm working um, from, from the generosity of a whole lot of people. And, and, and another thing that I like to say about that is that, of course, I'm sharing um, this wonderful aesthetic with all of the f uh, other fantastic artists who have designed the fabrics that I work with. I feel like I've, you know, I've got hundreds of people in the room with me for every piece I make using their, you know, re reimagining re re uses for their design. So that's, it's really, a interesting. that's really interesting uh, point of view. I hadn't really thought about that, that, the, that the, the, the fabric has also come from a designer and that that's and right. sort of is being put together. The other thing I think that's wonderful about your work, Kaylin, is it's so tactile. You know, you just you you and and I and I think it's okay, right, to touch it. It's it's not it's not like a an oil painting or a pastel or something that you you don't want necessarily to touch. But to touch your work is really a, an experience. I think. I, I hold your hands are clean. I encourage you to touch it once you buy it. Yes, absolutely. Now, I, I don't really let people touch it, but I, of course, have to touch it a lot when I'm making it. So I don't know. It's maybe that's just a convention. <laughs> I should probably just let them touch. <laughs> well, it is. Uh, it, 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 it has such dimensionality, too, you know, because it really does feel dimensional. And well, that, and um, yeah, and I think that, that that is one of the, and I'm sure Manjari who also works in fabric would would probably agree that fabric is so it's so emotional because of the touch and because of what it means to us and how the the fabric that we um, that we put on our bodies is so often imbued with someone's care or our own style or you know fabric is just sort of a very special medium in and of itself because it has so many um, meanings throughout culture and and um, yeah it, I, I find it a wonderful way to sentimentalize a building to make it out of fabric because all of a sudden it's like adorable. <laughs> <laughs> you know you, you said that you are you, you've been doing musicians and been doing people in a way so as a part of your commissions would you do portraits would could someone commission you to, to do them? I have, I, I'm actually, um, yes, although I am terrified of it, I have accomplished it just most recently on a, a Christmas commission where I've depicted someone's grandmother and God 
willing, she'll be pleased with it. I'll, I'll, I'll post that on my website to let everyone know if that one turns out and then they, they can feel confident about it. <laughs> There's something about trying to depict a face in fabric that's a little scary, but I think I'm pulling it off. <laughs> well, I'm sure you are. Much success and uh, thank you so much for, for what you've been, uh, been, been accomplishing and we look forward to more. And uh, just want to encourage everyone to, uh, to, to, to take her, um, the link to her website, to Caitlin's website is, is in the chat. So feel free to, uh, to look there. And of course, as I've said repeatedly, you can go to www.boylandheightsartwalk.com. And uh, because we do have, we have over 60 artists there. These, these four are wonderful and I salute them and appreciate them so much for the time that they've taken to, to share with us all their work and their, uh, and their abilities um, and their passion, but also um, be aware that, uh, that there are many more. So go and, and look, uh, support your local artists, support the, the arts in, in any way that you can, but, but definitely um, we're, we're, we're glad that Art Walk was able to continue and I do appreciate all the nudging that I got to keep it going. And, uh, and I wanna just, uh, just salute everyone. And again, thanks to United Arts for giving us this opportunity to, to share with you all. And, uh, and just one last thing, I mean, you know, uh, vaccine willing and everything going the way it should, we'll have Art Walk back in Bullen Heights on Bullen Avenue next year. So, uh, so thank you very much. And, uh, and I'll turn it back over to Charles. Awesome. Thank you, Lyman. And I mean, wow, just uh, I had um, actually I got a text message from County Commissioner Vicki Adamson, who's here. Thank you for joining us, Vicki. She's our liaison to the county. And she said uh, this is going to do some bad things to my credit card balance. But um, but hey, right. I mean, <laughs> that's that's the reason for the season. And uh, and I mean, just I'm thrilled to hear about all this great work and, and to learn about these artists. So thank you, Lyman. Thank you, Art Walk. Thank you to all our artists. Um, we'll keep sharing those uh, links and we'll share this video also with all our followers um, and hopefully get you some more traffic. So it's a pleasure, Lyman. I appreciate it. Thank you. Cool. And now it is my uh, pleasure. We've got just one uh, last thing to do here today before we wrap up. Um, and uh, and that is, uh, again, like I shared a little bit earlier, um, we just had a really wonderful Giving Tuesday. And we have an awesome chair of our development committee, who's Andrea Cantor. And she's now going to uh, do a little prize drawing to thank some of our donors. So take it away, Andrea. That was so much fun. That was great. Um... I'm so happy that we were able to hear from all these wonderful artists. And now we're going to have some more fun and um, announce the winners of our raffle um, from Giving Tuesday. So I'm just going to dive right in. Um, we have a wonderful um, necklace and earring combination from Kendra, Kendra Scott in their North Hills location. And the winner of that is Sonia McDyer. Um, we have a wonderful gift bag from Peachy Keen, and the winner of that is Shelly Chris. We have two $100 gift certificates from Synergy Face and Body, and those two winners are Georgia Donaldson and Leah Droll. Um, we were lucky enough to get four $25 gift certificates from Plates Kitchen in downtown Raleigh, and those winners are Mark Stewart, Michelle Tikla. Bruno Tofolo and Tim McKay. Another one of our local businesses, Giant Gummy Bears, has donated two um, gift baskets with their wonderful product. And those winners are Michael Beadle and Brent Simpson. Um, Doherty's Irish Pub of Apex and Cary were generous to us and gave us eight $25 gift certificates. Those winners are Emily Malpass, Nareesh Saraya, Lizette Watko, Ann Rogerson, Susanna Hugh, Pamela Blizzard, and A. Scott Honeycutt, and Sandy Seppos. And First Bank gen generously donated a coffee basket and a wine basket. Um, the winner of our coffee basket is Terry Gervais, and the winner of the wine basket I'm a little jealous, is Bonnie Kidd. And a popular downtown restaurant has also uh, generously donated a $20 gift certificate 
And that winner is Brittany Pay. So we wanna say congratulations to all the winners and thank you to our local businesses and all the donors for your generous contribution. We'll be in touch with the winners next week to arrange getting your prizes to you. But if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Laura Montgomery at United Arts Council. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks very much, Andrea. I appreciate it. And uh, it's just been really awesome. I appreciate all those local businesses wanting to help support the arts. That's just fantastic, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll just before we um, before we wrap up, I'll just let y'all know we're gonna um, take the um, first Friday in January off because uh, it's uh, I believe it's New Year's Day or maybe the second. So we're gonna skip that, but we'll be back in February uh, for a virtual first Friday, including the announcement of our business support of the Arts Awards. So we'll hope to see y'all then. We'll be um, sharing information real soon. And, uh, and of course, we hope that we're back to doing this in person sometime in 2021. But for now, uh, we love seeing you all online. Thank you for spending your Friday evenings with us. I, I find it's a great way to kick off the weekend you know, with a little bit of art and spending this time together. So we appreciate you. Thank you. Have a safe weekend and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye now.